I'm and will stay on mute as much as I possibly can. And I'm not gonna. I think it maybe someone else could display the uh, the, the notes instead of me, just for bandwidth's sake. Hey, thanks. All right, you can see my Google Docs. Yeah, thanks. So, um, like I said, I'm at, at SIGCOM in a public space, and so I'm going to uh, try to say very little here. Um, so the first item on the agenda is Jenkins status. This is for DAF. Uh, there's a bunch of Ether on-ramp jobs that have not been running, and uh, we just wanted to hear how that's going. I don't see DAF in the participant list, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah. This is proving untenable at the moment for me. Now, let me try again. So, DAF is not available? Yes, Larry. I'm going to, I'll, I'll ping him, but right now um, he's not on the call. Okay. Okay, so let me move to the second item. Uh, what the consequence of this, I don't know what all's not running. I just know that my updates to the documentation is not running. And I've been fixing the way I explain how on-ramp works for people that have been stumbling over things and it's not been, the, the website's not been updated. If you happen to be someone that's following along, I'm able to keep the, um, I'll just make note here. The docs on the uh, the book site are up to date because I'm able to keep those accurate. The biggest thing is is item number two. Um, with on ramp, uh, it turns out that we have more of a dependency on Ubuntu server and not desktop than we understood. Uh, I, I'm, that's my characterization of the problem. It really, at a lower level, is uh, we have some dependencies on uh, system D, network D, and not net manager managing the network. And anyone who's, who's bringing up Ubuntu, probably desktop, is probably going to have it configured differently. Different people have figured out workarounds for their one off case, but I don't know what the appropriate um, general solution is, one of which could be that we require, make a Ubuntu server a hard requirement, but I would like to soften that if I can. Um, so mostly this is just a call to anyone that is more familiar with how to get this right than I am. And if you visit the troubleshooting document on Google, the network services section will kind of summarize the state of affairs at the moment. And I'm just happy to have anyone's input there on the uh, the right way to do it. I actually see we have a couple of people canonical online. So uh, specifically, if you can offer any advice there, it'd be helpful. Well, I'd be happy to help, or at least to point in the right direction. Uh, here, here's Guillaume Belanger from Canonical. Um, I'm no Ubuntu expert, but I can definitely find somebody uh, if you need help. Yeah, I, I, and I think I think well, I mean, read read the the document, but it's it's basically um, who's in charge of, of configuring the network, and we're making certain assumptions, and that doesn't hold for everybody. And the second you you muck with that, then you've got conflicting configurations. And I actually took a server network offline uh, as a consequence, so it needs to be we need to tread carefully there. 
And um, I read over this document a little earlier and was looking at whatnot. And the thing that confused me a little bit is the fact that your netplane files are ending in .network versus .yaml. Why was .network chosen as the extension in the document? I don't know. That's actually don't something okay. I don't have. I don't understand. There's a lot of, appears to be a lot of semantics embedded in the names that are chosen and which ones are or not. Is net, net, net plan in the, is in the name, is service in the name, is network in the name? And I don't understand all of that at, at a deep enough level. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at this. I mean, it's typically net plan that is used. And if you're using net plan, then it's in Etsy slash net plan, not system D network 05. Well, that's just it. We, we aren't technically dependent on net plan. And Andy can speak to how this, the history of it, but we're, we're depending on um, net plan sits above the other two configuration mechanisms. Yeah. And, okay. I, I, and do you, uh, okay, so you are trick, you, you are targeting 2204 as the, the Ubuntu server version. Okay. Well, so we started out in, Part of the problem may be the shift from 20 to 22. Mm -hmm. Because this all seemed to work in 20. Okay. Is there somewhere, I, you know what? How about, um, like who, who, who is been looking at this? Yeah, so there's, there's, net plane config where where did this troubleshooting i guess where where's the master document for this this the on -ramp. so it's the on ramp um slack channel where people will say i encounter the following problem okay and we've distilled it down in summary here and and part of the part of the issue is people have figured out one off solutions that work for them and i'm trying to figure out something that i can tell people that'll work more generally. Yeah. So uh, the other thing, uh, in case you weren't aware, um, is when, you, when you've when you got an Ubuntu cloud image, that's, for the most part, that is Ubuntu server. So if you're doing things like booting um, an Ubuntu cloud image in your own OpenStack or in AWS or whatnot, it's typically Ubuntu server that you are booting. So, um, you know, Aether assuming Ubuntu server is probably a good thing. Um, I will check in the difference uh, on desktop between 20 and 22. I feel like, I know that uh, um, 22, I believe NetPlane is used everywhere now, but um, it's been a while since I've looked at that. Unfortunately, I'm running 2304, and <laughs> you know the quick things that I look at there aren't quite good enough. But um, but yeah, uh, okay, so I'll pop, I, I, I think I'm already in on-ramp, Aether on-ramp in Slack. So um, I'll take a look through that and see and, if there's- and, yeah, DME, DME specifically, and it, in, in a better situation, I'll be able to have a better conversation with you. It's just really hard for me to hear right now. Okay, absolutely, sounds good. Okay. Um, so SD core and, Let's see who I'm, I don't have my list of who's on right now, but is is AJ on? So this is a general question. Yeah, I'm there. Uh, I'm there, and Badri is also there. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, Badri, me, Badri, and Ajay are here. Yeah. So the question is, who has who is on actually has merged rights? for SD core or commit rights, mm -hmm. however you want to say it. I do have, and I believe like uh, most of the core developers have the merge access. So I just, I mean, there was there was the poll request that um, mm -hmm. drew your attention to. I just wanted to make sure that there were people watching that. And if there isn't, what do we, what can we do about it to make sure that there are? Mm. True. I mean, uh, I, yeah. I mean, I, I, I couldn't pay attention, but yeah. I mean, if, if somebody can tag me, I will definitely look at it. Uh, and I did review all the peers um, 
uh, Larry, uh, after you tagged me in one of the message, I did review all the tiers. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, and I do, I do appreciate that. I'm um, sort of longer yeah. term. Yeah, in general, we need more people who can sign up for the review, so that at least one of the member can look at the uh, full request. Right. I, I kind of just wanted to get a better handle on who was actively, for each of the, the subcomponents, actively watching and, and willing to put some time into it. And that's take time, I realized. So, I, I do look at the SD core channel and I do review it. But uh, specifically in this case, I had missed. But uh, I mean, I, I'm, I, I do the review part most of the time. Yeah, so I think this um, the, the note came in on Ether Dev, so maybe maybe both of those. Uh, Larry, just one comment. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, Gabriel. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, sorry, I just I joined. Uh, from the UPF perspective, uh, I think uh, Guillerme's team have a PR open regarding a refactoring for the route control. I'm looking into into that as well. Awesome. And maybe I, I can comment. Yes, we do have uh, around maybe five PRs across different SD core projects. Um, and yeah, thank you, AJ, for the review. Um, we're just looking at like what's the process for each of the. Are you the only one? Because uh, it, it, like it, let's say you're on vacation for two weeks. Is there is there a process that doesn't depend on, on yourself, for example? No, I'm I'm not the only one, but yes, I was on vacation, so I'm I'm just trying to see how uh, how do we make sure that those other uh, other members respond to the pull request, right? So it's definitely good to see that pull request coming, right? So I can probably tag the folks there. Uh, that's what I can do, but so in in general, uh, like Larry, we need a bigger pool, right? So how do we motivate? folks to uh, review the pull request voluntarily, right? Not to wait for anybody tagging them on the well, slide. I mean, that's a great question. I don't know how we motivate people if people's job responsibilities have shifted, but we need to replace mm. those people with other, other people perhaps at some point. We're, we're, this is not something we're going to resolve now. I wanted to raise yeah, it yeah. because it's a general one that we have not paid enough attention to. We honestly haven't gotten a lot of full requests until recent. So is, sorry, I'm, I'm, you know, like I mentioned, kind of joining in out of the blue here um, to, to, uh, to this meeting and like, is there um, governance sort of documents or, or, or some sort of setup? Like, do, do you have the concept of like um, PTLs from OpenStack? It, it, does, does the community have that equivalent? So yes and no. I mean, the, the project is in a bit of transition because of people moving from ONF to Intel and restarting the project. There is okay. governance in place. There is Jenkins where you can, I'm sorry, there's uh, Jira where you can put jobs or, you know, tickets. Yeah, yeah. So, the, I mean, most of that machinery is there. It's just the people associated with them right now are a bit of transition. Yeah, well, the other thing that I've noticed, though, is things like the links at the top of this document for uh, ONF Infra Jira and Aether Jira either i need to do something special with my account or those links are broken and is daf there so i think it needs your account sorry i believe it needs your account you need to have an account i have an account i did sign up for an account but um what the heck here well, now where did my account go? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to sign into one of these. But that, that was something, you know, like, so I've created my ONF account, but do you have to create accounts in each JIRA instance? No, 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 it should be do single sign-on. Sorry? No. It's single sign-on. You should not have to create an account for each one. Okay. 
Because, yeah, and then there's like the little top um, drop down where we've got the Garrett cord, Onos Garrett, um, you know, all those different things. But half of the links don't really seem to be working. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at or if things are recent or not. Yeah, and we're missing a guy that can tell, answer those authoritatively. Hey. So again, for the, for the sake of a better communication channel, I will follow up with you. This is Mark, right? Yes, I'm Mark, yeah. <laughs> I will follow up with you and try to get you better answers than I'm getting you today. Oh, sounds grand. Thank you. Yeah. Um, SD Ran is uh, Wu Xiong on? No, he doesn't look like he's on. I don't know if you heard that, Larry, but no, we've Are you still there, Larry? Larry just sent a uh, chat saying that he can he can't hear anymore. Somebody else needs to run the meeting. Maybe okay. close it out. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, you want to do the honors? Yeah, I am um, here, but I it is just proven too hard for me to do anything. They don't have much left left in the agenda here. So I think Wu Jun's not here. I'm not sure then we have um, somebody representing SD Ran. I'm, I'm looking through the list. I don't think so. And then um, and then the last agenda item on here is around the Tekinar. Um, I don't know if Larry added this, maybe Denise added this, but there's a plan. So if, the, if people hadn't seen, there was a, um, a blog post on OnRamp. Um, and uh, and then a follow up to that with a, a Tekinar that, that Larry is planning to um, host and Denise is helping to organize. And uh, some links in here to register. Anybody else want to say anything about the Tekinar? Blog post. All right, any other business? Uh, Tavon, uh, not about the techno and uh, not about the business. Uh, this is Pritam from GS Lab. Hey, Pritam. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I just uh, want to uh, confirm one thing that uh, to run a data, uh, we need to create uh, uh, one more uh, virtual interface. That's ENV, which is mentioned in SD Core uh, YAML file in both the 4G and 5G, uh, uh, 4G and 5G. So, uh, but there is no recommendation for that, uh, means how to create that. Means uh, uh, internally or externally, we know the steps, but that uh, means those steps are not documented anywhere. So, so, so Pritam, I, I didn't understand what interface you're saying. Can you probably? Uh, EMB, it's EMB uh, to run uh, AIB, uh, means to run the data over the AIB. Okay, is it about 4, 4G or 5G? Both. Uh, um, I, I don't think it's true for both because 4G has a complete different simulator where we don't need to mm, create any interfaces. And 5G, I doubt which interface you are referring to. If you can give me precise example, like in this case, or, or maybe if you can point uh, me to what I, exactly. I will, uh, I will uh, hmm. uh, 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 mail or text uh, all the details. Yeah. 
yeah 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 that, yeah, that that would help. yeah 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 thank you and it will be grateful for both of us yes yeah thank you yeah thanks 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 Ray. okay any other business any other topics uh yet yeah, i mean i would like to um brief about the the things that ether qa is working on right now yeah, please. Yeah. Um, so first of all, uh, we are working on a performance test. So earlier, uh, we were using real uh, uh, real UE and real Enode B, where we were getting around 50 Mbps um, with AF packet configuration. So um, uh, in that case, I mean, the uh, we are getting a... a, 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 a performance or the throughput, um, which was, uh, I mean, uh, pretty low uh, from the one that we that we have seen in uh, our last demo session from Intel Labs. So uh, we we tried uh, using GNB uh, UV Ransom as suggested by Intel Labs, and they are also using it uh, in their tests. So uh, during that. Uh, test with AF packet, we are still seeing around uh, 100 Mbps uh, uh, throughput there, which is, uh, I mean, uh, th there is a huge difference between the one that we have seen in the demo. Uh, but Intel Labs has, uh, has been using uh, D DPDK settings with, uh, uh, with SRIOV. So this is a hardware accelerated uh, you, uh, UPF, you can say. So probably, I think, uh, I mean, uh, we would need some more inputs on that if anyone can share. Uh, we, we are in touch with uh, Suresh uh, from Intel Labs. And uh, I mean, to clarify our doubts or uh, if we get some help from him. So he has been very helpful for us um, on clearing our some of the doubts. Uh, we'll be we'll keep on keep on touch with him to check some more. Um, I mean, to clarify or to uh, to see if uh, we can do something more on the AF packet side. Yeah, yeah. I think we should uh, get uh, far more than this uh, uh, at least based on our testing. And right. uh, at, at this point, uh, uh, since we were turning into another kind of an uh, demo so that setup is not available for me right now to test. I will check again with the payo packet mode. Whatever I have shown in the last demo, it was DPTK mode. So yeah. uh, we can compare directly with that one. But even with the payo packet mode, uh, uh, we are uh, getting far better uh, uh, throughput. So and, uh, let me check and we will sync offline. And uh, we will take a look at your configuration, like the whatever the optimized the configuration we have uh, did, like the slicing uh, configurations and other uh, couple of things. And we will take a look at that, then we will uh, go from that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Asamrika, uh, one uh, question uh, for you: that uh, uh, did we uh, means do you did uh, did all this uh, configuration on your on premises setup or it's on uh, cloud? Uh, like that on premise okay okay because we uh, tried all these things on aws so yeah. that's also no, no. matter oh no in our case we have here in the lab we have uh, several servers and that's basically what we have we yeah that, 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 that's what i caused the question because uh, we did uh, all these things on the aws so mm -hmm. okay yeah. yeah. Thanks. And thanks. Suresh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. If I at some at some point I think we saw around like 200 or 300 megabits per second in, but I yeah, I don't remember yeah, it was you yeah, ransom yeah. or. Yeah, it was with UV ransom in IPERF, and uh, I think uh, more than uh, uh, around 400 Mbps in that range I got. But yeah. uh, let's yeah, let's uh, first uh, test back again, and because we have moved to DPDK mode after that, so and uh, mm -hmm. let's. Uh, Play and uh, come back with that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it, but it's more than more than 100 megabits per second. At least yeah, we, yeah, we run some sure. more than that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other discussion on this topic? And if I didn't capture it properly, feel free to edit in the doc. 
But it sounds like you have a path to maybe try to help resolve this. Yes, yep, uh, got some points from here. So yeah, we'll work with Suresh and uh, see if we can improve on that. Okay, um, good. Yeah, so uh, other than that, we have been working on uh, setting up uh, jobs for automation. So um, we could see around 57 test cases out of uh, 60, uh, 60 or test cases passed. Uh, 60 test cases are, um, uh, 60 is the number that um, we are expecting uh, to be passed because uh, out of 76, around 16 test cases are getting failed due to um, some of the bugs that we have raised. So we are expecting 60 test cases um, to be passed, but we are getting roughly around 57 right now. We are deb debugging uh, remaining three test cases and um, we are monitoring the job as well. We have created a job on ONF Jenkins itself. So the bugs that you are finding, they're getting uh, reported. Is anybody picking those up? Are we seeing any progress in getting things closed? Uh, right now, no, we do not see any um, uh, updates on those bugs. So, sorry, where, where are they getting reported? On Jira. Oh. Okay. Is there any of those like UPF related? Uh, UPF related, I don't think we have uh, right okay. now. Yeah. So this might be a topic and you know this is a, a difficult call larry's in an odd situation and traveling and whatnot but maybe we push this to next week but um yeah i mean i think that if the community is not organically picking these up we should be taking a look at them and um, at least assessing where we are and see if we could find or encourage some people to take ownership of these components All right, and i'm open to other ideas anybody else want to say anything about it or suggest anything Let's do that. Let's just push it to next week's agenda. Okay. Anything uh, else? Anything else? QA side? Yeah. Uh, one last thing that I would like to mention, um, though uh, Sean has dropped, but uh, we have raised one of the uh, bugs for uh, on the behalf of Kaji. So Ono's consensus uh, store is um, get keeps crashing when GKE node gets upgraded. So that is something um, which was shared by GS Labs Kajit team. And uh, we have raised this bug in the bug ID is ether six, uh, 3680. I'll put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. So this bug is a bit... Um, uh, similar to the one that we have reported earlier, uh, which was related to persistent volume uh, PVC related uh, configuration. So uh, we are, I mean, it's more on the atomic side. So that's why we have assigned it to Sean because, uh, because he has um, fixed that thing earlier. And I don't know if Sean is on the call today. I don't see him. Yeah. He sent a he message dropped. that he dropped. Yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds like we need to do a triage of the bugs, kind of understand them and do an assessment um, and do it when we have, you know, and maybe is there any prep work we could do for next week? Um, we're doing it. can a, probably... I can probably look at the what bugs are open on SD core that I can look at it. Yeah. That would be great. And then you tagged Sean for this uh, uh, 6380 already? Yes, I have tagged him. Yeah, okay. 
So, um, yeah, I don't know if there's more we can do today. All right, any other topics? Any other? Open the floor. Uh, I don't know if it is Bilal in the meeting. Do not see Bilal. <sighs> Yeah, no, based on the kind of first item from last week, uh, we met uh, with Bilal, I met with Bilal and we work on the deployment of the multiple UPFs and the multiple slices. Uh, he has all the instructions to actually do that and kind of enable that capability on the on the own ramp. Now, what is the status from there? That's what I don't know at the moment, but. Yeah, I think Bilal is traveling with Larry, if I, if I recall correctly. Oh, okay. So it's just one of those weeks. It's a hard week for us. Okay. Any other business? Feel free to take some of these things to Slack, of course, and whatnot too. So, um, and um, and feel free to add things to the agenda for next week or whatnot. And if we do it in advance and tag the right people, we can and encourage the right participation. So last call. Okay, good. Good seeing everybody. Sorry for some of the logistical challenges today, but um, see you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone, bye.